Welcome everyone. It's so great to see all of you joining us. You are joining us for today's Table Talk and we are kicking off the month of May. Throughout the month of May, we are celebrating moms and Mother Day, Mother's Day, of course. So in that theme, we have with us Jody, and she is going to tell us a little bit about her, our, herself and what she does. We're so, so excited that you are joining us today, Jody. Thank you so much for being here. Why don't you just go ahead and take a moment and tell us all who you are and what you do. Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, again, my name is Jody Danen, and I'm a registered dietitian who writes the site Create Kids Club. It's a food and recipe site for families. Um, I focus on gluten-free and kids cooking. So it was a long path getting to that spot where I am right now, but currently that's what I do. And um, I just talked to a college class last week about jobs in the our, um, in our profession, and I said I would. It's a job I would do for free. So it's um, been a really really fun experience. That is really neat. So you mentioned it's kind of been a long path getting there. So would you mind sharing how you actually started your business? Sure. Well, um, I went through a bunch of different positions in my younger years. I actually was a stay at home mom for several years. Um, and when my kids went back to school or started school, I worked in their school as the food service director. And that's where I really discovered that I loved working with kids. I loved feeding them. I loved planning those menus. So, and watching um, how the kids selected their choices in the hot lunch line and what they were taking in their cold lunch. Um, it was fascinating to me. So after that, um, I decided to shift into something else. I wanted to start my own company and focus on that kids section and the families behind that. So that's where um, I initially started Create Kids Club about eight years ago now. Okay. Very cool. And we got a message from the chat saying that food is love, especially with children. I love that. Very well said there. Um, thanks for sharing that. Do you think that all parents would benefit from inviting kids to participate in creating a meal? I definitely believe that very, very much. That's sort of where this all started from. Um, you know, every kid at some point, I believe, is sort of picky. And what I found with my own kids when they were younger is getting them involved really got them to even touch and smell and experience food. So even if they weren't tasting it, you're starting that process of becoming more comfortable and acclimating them to these foods. And eventually, you know, they'll maybe take a taste or a bite. Um, so I think in families that can become a really important aspect of mealtime and dinner time, even without the pressure, right? So trying to expose kids to the food and most little kids, first of all, they love spending time with their parents and it's a really nice way to be in the kitchen, teaching them something, um, but also spending time as a family, even if it can get a little messy at times, I think that's where parents sometimes um, might avoid that. But I would say, you know what, you can clean up the mess or help, let them help you clean up the mess if they're older, but I think the importance of getting them and getting their hands dirty in the kitchen is so important that um, it's worth overlooking the, the mess that might happen, with, especially with those real little ones. That's yeah, that's great. Absolutely. So well said. Um, and tell a little bit about what Create Kids Club is like. I know that it's a website, which I can drop that link in the chat in just a moment. But go ahead and tell us a little bit about that specifically. Sure. So when you head over to Create Kids Club, you'll see recipes, recipes, recipes. That's what we're about. I, um, my goal is to share simple, family-friendly recipes that are easy to make with common ingredients. You're not going to find a lot of odd things now. However, it is a gluten-free website um, that changed in the last year, year and a half due to some family issues on my side that we needed to change that over. Um, so, you know, there will be gluten-free ingredients. So for the average family who doesn't need that, it might be a little different, but you can always substitute out. Um, but once you learn about the gluten-free diet, you know, a lot of foods are just naturally gluten-free anyways. So most of the recipes are, are recipes that everybody would enjoy anyways. Um, so that's what we're about. We're about trying to encourage families to cook together. Each recipe on my site is marked with um, two different symbols. One symbol is on ingredients, marking them for um, which ones need to be checked 
whether they're a gluten-free product or not, because say something like a can of soup can be gluten-free or cannot be. It's just something you need to check and you need to um, purchase a certain brand if you need it to be gluten-free. The other symbol we use on there is uh, another a symbol marking which steps in a recipe kids would need help with. So in general, it, I say about kids 10 and under, or if even older kids are not familiar with cooking or younger ones who are familiar with cooking, you know, as a parent, you can use your judgment which one they need help with, but we signify which steps in a recipe they might need help with. So things like using a sharp knife or an oven or a mixer, you know, it's just so that a, a parent can look at the recipe quickly and know, okay, this recipe my child should be able to make on their own, or this recipe they would need help at this point here and there. So that's really the um, goal of my website that is unique from other websites is that we mark those things for parents to make it easier. I love that. That is so, so helpful. Um, I think that's a great tool to get your kiddos involved in the kitchen. So with that being said, what are your tips for getting children or beginner cooks more involved in the kitchen? Sure. I think one of the first things is to get them involved from the first step. Let them pick out the recipe. Let them pick out what you're going to make. And if it's cookies, let them make cookies. You know, kids love making cookies. Instead of trying to direct them towards something super healthy or whatever, um, just let them try something that they want to make. Second, I would have them bring them to the grocery store and let them experience what that's about, um, helping select the ingredients for that recipe through the whole process. Then they come home and help you make it. Um, if you haven't cooked with kids before, looking at their smile on their face and the process and at the end, how proud they are of their work is like, the reason why I, I do this every day, right? Kids love doing that. And even those who may not love the idea of cooking once they're doing it, I think that you'll see that they too um, really show that pride in their work. Definitely, definitely. I love those tips. That's very helpful. Thank you for sharing. So what can moms do to ensure a safe cooking space for young kids? That's a good one too, because obviously you don't want to toss a three-year-old in the kitchen with a sharp knife, but these days you can find all kinds of safe products for kids, whether you go out and buy a lettuce knife, that's like a plastic safe knife. They make kids cookware. Um, that's what I stocked up on when my kids were little. So they were just like plastic knives that they felt like they were able to cut with them, you know, at the youngest stages. Then as they get older, you can give them a butter knife. You can give them like kind of working through the steps that way to make sure that they're safe, but also make sure that they're at the safe cooking height, that they're on a, a sturdy stool or a chair um, being by them. Don't put them on anything tippy and give them a knife. You know, you need to make sure that they're solid there. Um, putting a damp cloth under a cutting board so the cutting board isn't shifting on them can be helpful. Um, ensuring that they are just set up for success, having everything out because kids have a very small attention span. So, you know, having out the measuring cups and the bowls, all of that before you call them into the kitchen is probably a really good idea as well. Those are great tips. And sometimes even too for adults. I know the cutting board tip. I do that a lot often just to kind of give a little bit more of security to your cutting board rather than it moving um, on your countertops. If you've ever never done that, definitely would recommend that. Right. Um, and then we just had some folks sharing in the chat too. Just thank you for sharing your resources. So we really do appreciate that. Um, and feel free, if anybody has any questions for Jody, feel free to share them in the chat. So you mentioned about the grocery store and doing the food shopping. Do you feel that there is a benefit to bringing the children with you with shopping? And what would you say that benefit is? Uh, absolutely, I do think so. And as a parent, and I remember clearly having those young kids, and sometimes you're like, I want nothing to do with bringing them to the grocery store. But I definitely would not avoid it always. Maybe sometimes you bring them and sometimes you don't. But what I know personally I found when I brought my kids was I was extremely surprised by what they chose that I wouldn't have picked for them, especially in the produce department. Um, you know, different items. My daughter selected mangoes or they chose... Um, you know, some of the different fruits that maybe I wouldn't have brought home and certain vegetables. And since they picked it out, they were much more inclined to want to try it at home too. Or once we got home, they wanted to try it right away. So I think there's a lot of benefits in that way, even going through the aisles, um, helping them uh, select, letting them choose some of the items that they want to pick. I think that it's a really, really great experience if you haven't done it, you know, or putting, um, 
stipulations on it. I know in, in the giant stores, I had heard they have a number system for the level of health. I'm not sure how you classify that, but you know, you could play games with kids that way. Hey, select so many items that fall within this range. And, you know, it gives them a, a purpose to be in the store. And again, once they select the food items, they're much more likely to try them rather than you just telling them to. Yes, absolutely. I love that. So Jody, as I'm sure many of you are familiar, but if you're unfamiliar, we have the Guiding Stars Nutrition Navigation System. So our, some of our products within the store are rated on a one, two, three star rating system. Good, better, best nutrition. Never thought to do a scavenger hunt with your kiddos based on Guiding Stars. I love that idea, Jody. Thank you. Um, and I, yes, just to summarize, I think it's so important to get kiddos in the kitchen and also, you know, giving them that, that um, ownership, you know, over the ingredients. That's kind of what you were saying. Um, I love that idea because then they're more likely to try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great tips there. Um, let's see. Oh, I that's a great uh, comment. Uh, Joanne shared that um, the Giant and Martin's Market children's carts, the, the carts where you push them in and they're like a big car are a great asset yes. to the wide range of view of food, especially on the outer perimeter of the store. Um, also, too, I never even thought about that, but it would give your children a different view as well of the store. They're seeing it more at eye level rather than their mm -hmm. smaller level. So that's a great right. tip. Um, yes, and then guiding stars absolutely can be a helpful tool, tool, as we mentioned. So those are some great tips. Thanks, Jody. I love your perspective on that. So kind of changing gears, but also this is kind of your bread and butter, I would say. But let's talk about some simple meals that anyone can make, including a child, for Mother's Day, right? Mother's Day is just around the corner. Actually, I, it dawned on me that Mother's Day is this upcoming Sunday, correct? It's on the 8th. Yes. It, I feel like it usually lands later, but that was a huge surprise to me. Anyways, so what are some simple recipes that a child could help to make for a mom for Mother's Day to, to, to delight mom or even a special woman in your life? Do you have any suggestions that you could share with us? Sure. Well, I have a lot of suggestions, so um, I can't talk about them all. First, I would just say that if you want to see lots of them, head over to the site. There's a tab on the top that talks about, I think it says kids friendly or kids cooking, something like that, that will list a lot of the recipes on the site that are going to be super easy for kids to make. Um, but some of my favorite ones that I think would be fun for kids, there's a French toast muffin uh, recipe on there that's super easy. Even the littlest of kids can make it. You're tearing the bread into chunks. You're stirring it up, putting it in a muffin tin, baking it. Um, then when they, it gets done, they can pull it out, serve it with a side of like berries. You know, even the youngest of kids can make that recipe. Obviously it goes in the oven. So, you know, dad, you're going to have to help them with that portion of it because, you know, unless they're old enough, you got to be careful with the ovens. Um, I think that would be a really fun one, but it doesn't always have to be about breakfast. So we have some fun recipes on the site for lunch as well. You'll find uh, one of the popular ones, it's like a, a turkey sushi. So it's really just like a tortilla with turkey and some vegetables and you roll it up and cut it. But the fun part of that for kids is like serving it with chopsticks. So it kind of looks more like a sushi recipe, which, you know, they'd be, again, the littlest of kids could do. Um, there's some camping recipes on there that I think are kind of fun. They're made in tin foil. So there's like a, a campfire foil packets, I think it's called, but it's like a breakfast item. It's got hash browns and eggs and things like that, that would be easy for kids to make. But there's lots of dinner recipes on there as well that are really, really super simple that kids could also make. Um, things like um, there's a sheet pan pizza on there that, you know, it's everybody likes pizza, but it looks a little bit different. They're rolling out the, the dough and topping it with the different pizza toppings. So I think some of those could be fun. And again, to make it simple for kids, you can always just buy a bagged salad. You can do the fresh berries on the side to make that a complete meal for them um, that they can feel super proud to serve, you know, a full, full meal for mom. Definitely. I really like the tin foil idea. What sorts of things do you put in the tin foil kind of packet? Tell us more about that. Sure. Well, actually I have a couple of them on there, but one of my favorite ones is kind of, you cook it open and I believe it's a tortilla that goes into it. And then, so the tortilla holds the hash browns and the ham and the egg, and then you just put it in the oven and it bakes. And then you take the whole shell out and it kind of is held like that. So the foil helps, you know, make it into that shape. So that one's kind of fun. 
and it's delicious and it's simple. So it is a fun love, one. Yeah, I love that one. I've, I have not heard of that kind of foil packet. So that's definitely something. And again, like, as you said, it sounds very easy. So something that anybody can make in the kitchen, um, very balanced. I heard def definitely a couple different components within there. So that's a great idea. Yeah, it is a fun one. It's unique and simple and it's customizable, right? So you can take what you have in your fridge and use that as well. Very cool. All right. So I also hear that you make an amazing smoothie. What sorts of ingredients? Tell us about that. This sounds very infamous and I, I would, I'm curious to hear. <laughs> Well, there's one particular one on the site that's been doing super well for years and years. And, you know, I, as dietitians, I think we think about it, but the, uh, other people don't Now, This one is I like for kids because the color of the blueberry in a smoothie is so vibrant and so strong. You can color or uh, cover a lot of other things. This particular smoothie recipe has spinach in it and it's not green. The color of the smoothie is this vibrant purple color. Um, it also has some flaxseed in it. Um, I think I'm, that one probably has some yogurt in it and honey to sweeten it up for a kid, but it's the spinach that's in the smoothie that I think is really unique that you can't, you can't tell it's in there and you don't actually taste it either. So that smoothie has done really, really well. And it's also um, considered a high fiber smoothie because of all the extra fiber in those fruits and vegetables and in the flaxseed. That's so, a great idea. Um, yeah. Jane shared from the chat just that she loves all of these ideas that she she you are sharing with us. So thank you all so, so much. Um, I'm curious, the spinach, is it fresh or frozen in the smoothie? I use fresh. Okay. You could use frozen, mm -hmm. but um, I always, yeah, because you start the blender and there's pictures on the website too, right? So there's like all this spinach in there and you're thinking, how is that possibly going to taste good? But you know, it blends right in and you never, you never tell. I mean, now if you use too much, you're going to start tasting the spinach, but the color is what I always get pretty excited about how it's this beautiful, vibrant purple color. Yes. Um, the other thing on there on the site, you'll find some other smoothies. I, I like using tofu in smoothies as well. And that peanut butter powder works really well mm -hmm. in smoothies as well. Mm -hmm. Do you know offhand any um, smoothies that do use tofu? I would love to hear more about that. Sure. I'm trying. I know there's one on the site. I can't remember offhand what's in it, but I know it's super simple. I think it might have the peanut butter powder with the okay. tofu and either some kind of a milk. At my house, we use a lot of soy milk because of some dairy issues, but obviously regular milk would be delicious as well. Um, I, it might be called the tofu smoothie on there if we go look, look it up. So yeah. Feel, and if you'd like to, we can definitely do a little bit of recipe searching. If you'd like, feel free to share your okay. screen. I know some, we actually just had um, a comment asking that she would love to, uh, that uh, Jane would love you to share the recipes with us after sure. our sessions. If you don't mind, I, we would love to, to share all of the recipes. Absolutely. Here, I'll see if I can share my screen and find the so this is the, if you can see the screen now, yeah, we can see this it. Is the French Thank you. toast muffins um, that I was looking at. And if you look, so here's the kids cooking tab where you'll find a bunch of different options that are simple for kids to make. Um, but I like to use a search bar when I'm looking for a particular thing and we'll see if it comes up when I type tofu. So there it is. So here's the tofu smoothie. And that hey. looks delicious by the way. It is really good. So again, we can use the, let's see if, there we go. We'll go down to see what's in this. So, oh yeah, this one uses the tofu, banana, real peanut butter, the flax seeds. I really like using those in smoothies to just give that ex little extra boost. And this one used almond milk, but you can use any kind of milk that you'd like. So, I mean, in smoothies like this, they truly do take five minutes. It doesn't take any time at all. And kids really don't know what's in the smoothie when you hand it to them. So as long as it tastes good, you'll be in luck. Yeah, that's a great recipe. Do you have another favorite that you'd like to search to show us? I think this is very helpful to see the, the website that we've been talking about today. So sure, well, I'll it up. see if I can find the foil pack for you. Oh, yes. That sounds great. And feel free, if anybody wants to see a specific recipe that we've been talking about, feel free to go ahead and share it in the chat. Sure. Oh, yeah. This um, shrimp and rice foil pack is good, too. But Ooh. this is the one 
that I was talking about. And it's also easy cleanup. That's another thing that I love about foil packets. Yes, very easy cleanup. And you can see it's got the hash browns in there and it's really simple. You're really just layering them. You're layering the egg, the ham. Um, so the way that I set up the website, each post typically goes through some pictures and then we like to showcase the ingredients so people can see what's in the recipes and then kind of work through the process of how step-by-step step, how you would make this recipe. So you'll always find those pictures that you can reference. And I think that's helpful for kids. You know, some things on the site are pretty basic An adult who's familiar with cooking might be like, okay, I, I don't need that. But I always think of if a child is looking at it, let's show them some pictures of what they should be doing. That is very um, helpful. Yeah, and then so we'll try to answer any questions that have come up upon the recipe or that we found people are interested in, in knowing more about. So you'll find that in every recipe as well. Um, some other different ideas of associated recipes or something similar, we'll do that. And then, now this one is an older recipe. It doesn't have my markings, but for the gluten-free portion, but you can see that I haven't marked for the, the kids cooking. So okay. they can do all the, the beginning portions of the recipe. And once it goes into the oven, just having a parent help, help them with that. Um, Great. I love yeah. that. Yes. Uh, Jane chatted and commented that uh, she loves how organized and simple you have made your rest or your website rather. I do too. I love it. It's step-by-step -step easy. Thank you. Yes, we work hard at that and are always looking for feedback. So if you ever go on to it and see something that doesn't make sense to you or that could be an improvement, please email me or let me know because that's the only way we can improve and make things better for the people who are actually utilizing the site. Very important. So just because you mentioned, and I'm personally intrigued, um, the indicators for like the skill level and then the gluten-free, do you have like a, a recent recipe that you might uh, be able to share with us that sure. and show both of those? That would be great. Absolutely. So this is the front page of the, the site. So let's go into the, the uh, dairy-free, it's a gluten-free and dairy-free uh, chicken pot pie, but I've got a bazillion chicken pot pie recipes on the site. If you want just a regular one, it's there. They're really easy. And um, that was my daughter's uh, favorite meal, is my daughter's favorite meal. So we've accommodated it to fit our lifestyle. Um, okay, so yes, now I started including brands in the pictures just for those gluten-free, dairy-free folks that you can actually see when I go to the grocery store that these brands are okay. So I do try to do that more often than I had in the past. Um, and here you can see that we um, list which uh, equipment is needed and the ingredients that are needed. And these are the, the symbols here. And we kind of talk about um, the gluten-free guide. What do those, when somebody's new to the site, what in the world are those check marks? We try to explain what that's for. Um, again, going through the step-by-step, -step, this kind of a recipe for some people is, is far more complicated because you're building out that roux and it can be not thick or, you know, if it doesn't get thick, what do you do? We try to talk about tips on, on those sorts of things on how to fix something if it's not working out for you. Um, but let's go to the recipe card at the bottom here. Again, the frequently asked questions. And then... Here you'll see it's all marked and I include the, let's find it down here. We kind of talk about what this means. So if you print out this recipe, that's gonna be included in there too. It'll talk about what the symbols mean. The star symbol is what we use to denote um, the levels of help that kids need. So when you go back up, now this one is all made on the stove top. So kids are going to need help with this recipe. But I always like to signify that anyways, because I'm a believer that every child can make any recipe. I don't think, as long as they have help, right? So they can always Absolutely. be helping. Now, if you have a two-year-old, maybe this isn't the best to have it <laughs> sitting there, but you could move it off the stove and they could help you. But mm -hmm. you know what I mean? By five, they could be helping you. You know, it's just yeah. learning which what your child is able to do and what they're comfortable with and what you're comfortable with as well. But so, yep, the ingredients are listed on which items people should check to make sure if they're gluten-free or not. And then the step-by-step -step instructions on which steps to take a look at that, where your child would need your help. That's great. Thanks so much for showing us a little bit more about that. We got a great question coming from Megan in the chat. So she is wondering, what is your favorite recipe to eat? And then what's your favorite recipe to make? 
Oh, that's interesting. Um, you know, these, the, the um, chicken pot pies are probably one of my favorite because it's sort of an indulgent recipe with those pie crusts and stuff. It's something that we probably don't make all the time, but being my daughter's favorite, you know, we probably make it a little bit more. Um, and then I'll show you the, let me see if it's on here yet. While you're searching for that, just Jane chimed in about that she was diagnosed with uh, diagnosed gluten free 25 years ago, and that we've come quite a long way in cooking over oh those gosh. 25 years. Right. Yeah. That that had to be very difficult. I feel like now brands are far more on top of things. We have some um, laws for labeling, which still need to be improved greatly, in my opinion. But yeah, kudos to you because that had to be very challenging in the 25 years. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm going to share this recipe only because again, it's my daughter. My daughter is the one with celiac disease. Um, and she used to bake all the time before and she loved cooking and all that. And once she got diagnosed, she really stopped doing that. Um, I think it kind of hit her hard. Like the stuff that she liked to make wasn't necessarily things she could make anymore, but this particular yeah. recipe she makes all the time. So it's not the healthiest recipe, but it's something that she enjoys enough to still get in the kitchen and bake. So it is something that I like, um, making. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> That is my dog who is oh, that's, sorry. That's totally fine. We've got a guest a puppy who's in trouble. So yeah, a guest Let's dog see. chef. <laughs> but that looks delicious, the monkey bread. I love that. Yes. Idea. Yeah. So it's just finding some of those ingredients that work for your family. And again, um, she likes making that one, but there's lots of other healthier options on the website as well. Sure. All right. So we're kind of coming to our close of our half hour here. Um, feel free if you have any other final questions to ask them in the chat. But if not, Jody, just to kind of to wrap everything up, how do you envision your website helping families and kids get more involved in the kitchen? Well, I really hope that if a mom wants to have her kids cook, that my site comes to their mind that they think, gosh, if I needed a recipe, where to go? And I hope someday, you know, for more and more people, that's what they can come and know that when they click on my website, they will have guided um, instructions and information on how to achieve that. And also um, information on how to do it safely. Like you said, we do have some information on setting up your kitchen and the knife skills, uh, different cooking techniques like that, that families can use. I think that's a great point there. We're getting a lot of thank you messages from the chat. Jane also chimed in saying that she appreciates the pictures that you share with your website, which I agree. The visuals are great. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Any other final questions before we wrap up? I'll give everyone a moment to kind of absorb all the information, but lots of thank yous from Terry, from Deb, from Eleanor from Teresa, from Jane. Everyone's just a very, very grateful, it seems like, for what you do and the recipes that you share with us to your community. We are very grateful. Well, thank you very much. It's, you know, that's the reason why I do it. So it's really nice to hear. It's kind of an isolating thing. You don't get to hear that too often. So really, you're all making my day. Thank you. <laughs> Good. All righty. Well, um, if anybody has any last minute questions, feel free to ask them now, but I am going to go ahead and stop the recording. Jody, thank you so, so much for just being with us, spending your half hour with us. Uh, we just appreciate all of the knowledge that you've shared with us and we will be sharing out their recipes as well. Perfect. Sounds good.